A North Carolina father of six died after being struck by a wave at the beach. It is tragic and the death occurs quite in an unusual way. This is the photo of Lee Dingle, a father of six. He died on Friday after a tragic accident at a North Carolina beach. Script taken from CNN, written by Eric Levinson. All photos may not represent the story. This video is especially made for English learners. A father of six has died after a wave struck him on a North Carolina beach and slammed him to the sand, breaking his neck, his wife said on Twitter. Lee Dingle, 37, was playing on Oak Island's beach with three of his kids Thursday when the wave knocked him to the ground, Shannon Dingle said. The force of the impact broke his neck and made his throat swell so much that his brain was deprived of oxygen for too long to recover, she said. He died a day later despite the efforts of some heroes, including their kids, to try to save him, she said. My partner, my love, and my home died today after a freak accident, Shannon Hope Dingle said Friday. We met when I was 18 and he was 19, and we've been together ever since. I wasn't supposed to be saying goodbye at 37. I don't know how to be a grown-up without him, but I'll learn. I just wish I didn't have to, she said. Shannon Dingle posted in Instagram, My partner, my love, and my home died yesterday after a freak accident. Lee was playing on the beach with three of our kids yesterday, and an intense wave hit him just right to slam his head into the sand, break his neck, and make his throat swell so much his brain was deprived of oxygen for too long to recover. Some heroes, including our kids, tried to save him, but it wouldn't have mattered what they did. His body couldn't recover from the initial injury. We met when I was 18 and he was 19, and we've been together ever since. I wasn't supposed to be saying goodbye at 37. I don't know how to be a grown-up without him, but I'll learn. I just wish I didn't have to. Details to come about all the things. Please pray for us. And, you know, feel free cuss and smash stuff because God knows I'll be doing some of that. And breathing and hydrating and eating and all those self-care things because I am worth it and because I have six little people to parent. Oak Island Water Rescue said on Facebook that it and other agencies provided emergency care to Dingle within minutes of the accident but he did not survive. Dingle was the president of Atlas Engineering in Raleigh, North Carolina, a company that specializes in solving structural problems and repairing other damage at buildings, its website says. Atlas Engineering senior partner Tom Caldwell said Dingle had been promoted to president just two weeks before his death. Caldwell praised Dingle's big heart and said he and his wife were raising six children, including four who were adopted. Lee was calm, friendly, humble, and very, very capable. He always put others ahead of himself, Caldwell said. His kind do not come along often. We will miss him terribly. Another co-worker, chief engineer and executive vice president Chris Kutu, lamented the tragic death. He was a dream employee and co-worker, a good friend, a loving, dedicated father, and a wonderfully kind person, Kutu said in an email. He was brave, calm, and reassuring, he was somebody one would want around when conditions were dangerous or chaotic. He will be greatly missed, he added. In addition, Dingle worked as a collapse rescue engineer with the, the North Carolina Emergency Management. He also was on the urban search and rescue squad that goes into collapsed or burning buildings to rescue trapped people and recover those who had died, including at the recent gas explosions in Durham, Caldwell said. Dingle had 15 years of experience and graduated from North Carolina State University in 2004 with a degree in civil engineering. In 2016 the Dingle family was featured in a story by CNN affiliate WTVD that explored their efforts to modify a van to accommodate their daughter Zoe, who has cerebral palsy and uses a motorized wheelchair. Although they qualified for state funding for vehicle modifications, they struggled to get the state to approve money to cover the bill, WTVD reported. After their story was published, a local resident stepped up to provide the needed equipment, WTVD wrote. CNN's Artemis Moshtagian contributed to this report. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.